Hey everyone, today with us we have Dr. Peter Mossi sir, who is the head of orthodontics and the associate dean for internationalization at University of Dundee. Welcome to our program, Medulla sir. So my first question to you is, what made you choose a specialization in orthodontics? Yes, in the days when I was training, um, which was in the 1980s, uh, after my BDS degree, um, my postgraduate training began with uh, um, an internship, or it was called a house officer job, uh, in the Department of uh, Oral Surgery. And uh, I began um, my postgraduate career as uh, a surgeon. Um, and the opportunity after this arose uh, to become uh, an orthodontist with a special interest in cleft open palate. That's what drove my interest, the possibility that I would be able to be in the front line for the treatment of cleft open palate patients, which an orthodontist was in those days, uh, because an orthodontist was first on call when a child was born with a cleft uh, of the lip and palate. Um, the reason being that we needed to uh, construct a feeding plate. So we would take an impression and uh, have a feeding plate constructed so that the child could uh, get the maternal nutrition. So you were the director of a WHO collaborating center for craniofacial anomalies. So what were your roles like? That position arose because of our objectives in the field of cleft lip and palate to uh, obtain global consensus on strategies uh, for treatment and research. So there was a need to uh, um, generate interest globally to come to a common consensus on uh, treatment protocols and on research uh, into the best treatment protocols and in prevention. So my PhD uh, was on the genetics of cleft lip and palate and therefore I was invited by the WHO to lead uh, this consensus uh, initiative which was funded by NIH, uh, the National Institutes of Health, and uh, NIDCR, which is the National Institute of Dental and Craniofacial Research. And following the uh, success of the consensus meeting, uh, I was invited to be director of the WHO Collaborating Center, which in turn took me to the development of programs in the low to middle income countries which is the WHO's main uh, role and objective. So it must have been a good opportunity. It was tremendous. I mean, that was uh, one of the highlights of my early career, being able uh, to get involved at a high level with the most influential organization on the planet in terms of marginalized uh, treatment protocols. So that must have been an amazing opportunity for you, sir. So could you tell our audience a little bit about the MDPH program offered by University of Dundee? Well, it's a special program uh, in Dundee in that uh, it has um, developed a reputation for uh, being um, uh, world leading in aspects such as uh, marginalization uh, under inclusion oral health, uh, it has world leaders in public health evidence base, um, uh, world leaders in clinical trials and health services, and uh, world leaders in education such as uh, Suchi Nanjapa, the program lead, uh, is regarded as one of the best educators uh, and recently received a very prestigious award at the University of Dundee. Uh, so, our educational programs, our public health programs, our health services programs um, are world leading and that's the unique selling point. And we uh, came across the opportunity to align that with clinical dentistry through the program in GSL. And that led to uh, an innovation in the development of the MDPH, 
uh, to have clinical dentists who are highly trained through the GSL programs of life and basics, also having a preventive perspective. So hence the reason for the um, uh, alignment of the MDPH with clinical dentistry. That's a really good initiative, sir, because most of the students get to complete their degree within a very short period of time. Yeah, I think it's very innovative, and, but also it fits the global agenda at the moment. And the global agenda is changing. And the skills of the dentist that's required uh, for the future is changing. And uh, that was outlined in the World Health Assembly when oral health and oral diseases uh, have joined the list of non-communicable diseases. And that means we must be able to um, ensure that we move from an intervention agenda to a prevention agenda. And oral health really needs that. So coming to my next question, what do you think are the job prospects for students after taking up this course? Well, we know from running the MDPH program that many of those who complete the program in Dundee uh, have found opportunities uh, to continue their studies through PhDs because they get an interest in research through the program. Uh, there is a dissertation element to that program which teaches the basics and research skills. So one of the major um, uh, employment opportunities that arises uh, following the program is in research. And uh, we're very fortunate as well that the University of Dundee have a high profile in research. And in fact, we have became the first ever uh, global uh, research institute, uh, as Dental Institute becoming a research institute. So that is uh, preparing the students who do our master's programs uh, very well with, um, equips them very well to do research in their future careers. They also get opportunities in public health, uh, some of them in policy programs, some of them assisting. Uh, some of them have used the post-study visa period of two years to be able to establish themselves um, in another employment opportunity, whether in the UK. Others you know, move back to India and have leading careers as academics in their own institutions. So there's a variety of different uh, uh, um, possibilities for future employment, but the University of Dundee seem to be very successful in placing students uh, post-graduation. So are there any research assistantships available? Yes, indeed. Well, that's, uh, we encourage those uh, students to do PhDs. So if they're uh, interested in that as a career, then the best possible opportunity is get yourself onto a PhD program and the PhD opens doors because it then gives you uh, a, a ticket towards an academic career and prepares you very well because once you do a PhD, uh, you are then uh, uh, endowed with the skills to supervise PhDs uh, and to carry out uh, in-depth public health research or research in the area that you do your PhD in. It may not be public health because we're very interdisciplinary. Uh, we try and encourage um, uh, aspects of medical research, of uh, social sciences research, so it doesn't need to be in dental public health. Coming to my last question, how was your visit at GSL? Well, we've had a fabulous experience. I think I said in my introduction that people assume uh, that I come to India for the weather or for the food. And the fact is, yes, I do. But the most important thing is to meet with people. And we've got very special friends here who share similar aspirations. So uh, Dr. Sunil Ganta, who I've met uh, a few years ago, uh, we had a very productive conversation about the future of dentistry and uh, what skills are required for that. Dr. Bhaskar Rao is also a very effective leader and has been uh, inspirational in his uh, encouragement for this program. And to meet the students was a highlight, but also to see the environment and the facilities and the skills that they gain 
uh, through the uh, two programs that we're promoting here, uh, the basics and the life programs, um, provide tremendous life skills uh, and uh, also they provide um, a unique opportunity for innovation. Uh, the digital workflows here, the digital dentistry here is second to none. Thank you so much sir, for coming today and giving us your valuable time. Thank you very much. It was a great pleasure.